Welcome everyone to the Hospitality Reputation Marketing Podcast. I just want to take a moment before our show to introduce myself. I'm Adele Gutman. I have a 40 year uh, background in hospitality marketing and I have been recognized as being one of the most credible authorities on reputation marketing in the industry on account of having the number one hotel in the world on TripAdvisor, the number one, number two, number three, number four hotels in a row out of uh, hundreds of hotels in New York City on TripAdvisor, not just getting there to those reviews that and getting that placement, but staying there pretty much in that range right on the top in New York City, where there are many, many, many more luxurious hotels than we had, and yet we stayed there on top for 15 years. We had one of the top hotels in uh, Canada, one of the top hotels in Prague as well, just to be recognized as having the highest level of guest satisfaction of any luxury hotel brand in the world for our entire co collection as a whole. Wow, that is just an amazing achievement. And it isn't something that a person can do on their own from the executive office. It's the individuals who work in the hotel who deliver the unbelievable guest satisfaction. And it just goes to show that if you approach your hospitality business with a culture of caring, collaboration, and continuous improvement, actually anyone can do this. You can have loyal customers. You can have really loyal staff members. You can have your entire team working together for one cause, and that's making people happy. And guess what? You know what? A a guest who is rating you as five stars is going to return, is going to spend more at your hotel and be willing to pay a higher rate because they love the experience they're getting. They appreciate the value that you're delivering. And they're going to recommend with reviews and also in real life, uh, your hotel over and over again. It's a wonderful skill to learn how to have. And that is why I'm bringing you this show with interviews with some of the uh, greatest general managers who've really learned how to do this and can share their tips with all of us. So please subscribe, tell your friends, follow me and actually come to my website, which is adelgutman.com and, uh, and subscribe to the, the blog there as well. And if you would like some personal attention and would like me to have a chat with you uh, about your hotel and your issues and your challenges and how we might be able to power through those, I would be so delighted to help you. Thank you so much once again. I hope you enjoy the show and I really uh, want to be there to support you any way I can to go out there and get great reviews. Welcome to another episode of the Hospitality Reputation Marketing Podcast, Get Great Reviews. Every so often, I like to get together with amazing leaders in hospitality who are leading teams to get phenomenal results, not just in guest satisfaction, but in profitability. And you know what comes along with that? Employee mm -hmm. satisfaction. Those three things are not uh, three sides of the same coin. It is really one thing that works together so well. And I don't think that there's anyone who knows it better than my guest today, uh, I'm giddy with excitement to be talking to Craig Poole. He is the president of Reading Hospitality Management, uh, Doubletree by Hilton. Have I got that right, Craig? You're right. Absolutely. And, and he is uh, an absolute phenomenon and was named uh, General Manager of the Year by the American uh, Hotel and Lodging Association, right? Right. <laughs> right. And I also want to say that 
Craig has a marvelous podcast as well called Humanized Profit. I love it. They are quick little 10 minute chunks of wisdom uh, to really inspire you. And uh, welcome, Craig. Thank you so much. Well, for thank joining. you. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. You know, on this show, I really try to think about all the general managers and the directors of sales and marketing uh, and the and the aspiring leaders of hotels who are wondering how is it that some hotels are able to receive five star or five bubble if it is on TripAdvisor reviews one after the other after the other while others are uh, you know, are struggling with sometimes uh, three out of five or three and a half or four. Some people actually believe that three and a half or four out of five is very good because it's actually listed that way on TripAdvisor. But that's not where loyalty comes from, from your guests, does it? You don't aspire to four star reviews, do you? No. <laughs> no. So tell us the story about how you started with the with the Double Tree um by Hilton in Reading, Pennsylvania, where that hotel was at the time, how the employees felt at the time, and how did that yeah. transformation happen to what you have today, one of the highest rated hotels in the entire state of Pennsylvania on TripAdvisor. Well, thank you. Um <laughs> So it's a, it's a good story and we get to tell it a lot. Uh, so in Reading, five years ago, almost six years ago, we opened up the Double Tree in the second poorest city with the second highest crime rate in, this, in the country, Reading. Wow. Where nothing happened in the city for since 1991, when people just gave it up, they quit building uh, and it lost a heartbeat and a pulse. And uh, it was just in bad shape. And it, it was so bad, even the people that lived there felt, didn't have self-esteem. And they felt, um, and they got angry. And a lot of pe the people that moved away in the suburbs because of crime, they were angry because they moved away from the city. And the people in the city were angry that people moved away and that, and that they were marginalized. And the city became really um, an enabled city. People would, the people in the suburbs supported it, but they didn't go in. And people were, it was more of an enabling leadership style, even in the, uh, the government down there. They were just enabling everybody, almost a socialistic city. And um, we came in and um, built a brand new hotel in the middle of it. And um, 206 rooms or 209 rooms with 27,000 square foot of banquet space. And we actually spent $67 million to do that, which if you're in the mathematics, that doesn't make sense to put a, a hotel with 27,000 square feet of banquet space and 209 really cool looking rooms. But that's a commitment. That's when you jump off the bridge and you, uh, you're you on your own and you say, well, how am I going to do this? And uh, I spent a lot of time, I call it sitting on the curb, learning at the point of impact what was wrong. And when we were ready to open, um, we had, I think the papers had 16 or 18,000 people came and applied for the jobs. Wow. Right. And we didn't pick people on their profession or their expertise or, or anything except on their, if they had the joy of hospitality in their hearts. So when you go into a poor city, um, any city, and people have been marginalized, self, they, they, when you find people with joy in their hearts, that's, that's the critical piece. So we hired 230 people at that point, which typically you would be hiring about a, probably 150. Um, but we had grandiose ideas that we were going to be successful. Uh, we didn't let everybody tell us. We, everybody said we were going to fail. Uh, Albert Boskoff and I built a hotel 
with uh, a lot of other people's money. <laughs> but, um, and, and Albert said to me right before we opened, he said, what, what's going to happen here? And I said, well, everybody's going to say it's a great location if we win. Mm -hmm. And if we lose, everybody's going to say mm -hmm. they were right. So <laughs> either way, <laughs> the people are going to be right. And we ended up winning. We ended up doing a good job. We hired 209 people. Um, 192 were walked to work, meaning they were located within walking distance of the hotel. Because wow. we built this to change the city. The purpose of the hotel was not to make money. It ended up making money. But the purpose of the hotel was to change the, the inner city of a, of a city that's broken and to prove that you could do it through good leadership. That was the intention of the investors? Yes. Because uh -huh. at the final meeting, we had a meeting with there's a very few investors. It was only uh, 10. But we said um, most of the people here are wealthy. And we built this to change the community, not to make money. Or, that was our last meeting before the, the opening. And people said they understood it. And, uh, and that's what we did. And that's what we followed every day. That's our North Star. That's our guiding light. That's our final decision. We hold it up against it. This is going to change the community. If we hire this person, are they going to be changed? Or if we hire somebody different now, are they going to be part of a change of the city? And actually, I don't have a real problem hiring people because everybody wants to come and work where there's a purpose, not just a hotel. So it's we're so not, true. Yeah, it's, it's the purpose-driven business. I think that's what you would call it. And you can do this in a hotel or you could do it in a gasoline station or you could do it in a department store. It doesn't have to be a hotel. This happens to be a hotel that's changing a city and making an impact. But when you also hire inside of an inner city, 192 people that have been poor, they've never been in a business like this. They never served the type of meals that we serve. They never uh, served in banquets that are, you know, or we have a banquet next week for 900, well, 870 people. Um, the, it is, it is very, a very fancy <laughs> ordeal being served on by people that were marginalized, most of them. Plus, while we, before the pandemic, we had about 60 people that were uh, felons. Um, so and people like that. The, 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 the rich families, they like that we're doing work that they, they want to happen, but we're actually authentically doing it and making it happen. So they, what happens is everybody books their functions with us because they know we're changing lives. It's a, Absolutely. It's, and how, how did you manage to uh, communicate with your new team and uh, bring them to the level of training? How did you train them? How did you inspire them? Was it something you did um, in, in, in large chunks or is it something that was just woven into the daily practice? Right. How, is it, how, it, how do you communicate even from that point until today to make sure that their energy um, stays high? Storytelling, being very transparent. Um, I have a concept and actually, you know, you know Kyle and of Alice. Of course. That's how we connected, I think. That's right. But he came and filmed us and we, I have a concept called follow me and I'll be behind you. So that's a practice where... It's very easy to do. It's very duplicatable. It's not like I own this. It's, but I, I happen to read a lot and study a lot, and I like leadership. And I always liked the leadership of Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi and Jesus Christ. And those three people um, all said, follow me. One to the sea, one to the top of a mountain, and one to heaven. But the, the process was, it's funny that follow me. But the key, what they all did was they all were behind their people yeah. and people followed them. So we come up with this idea, follow me and I'll be behind you. And that's kind of how it works. They, I, my leadership has to improve every day for them to, fall, to be worthy of being followed. And if they're not following me, that means I don't want them to be with me. Or if they're not following me, I'm, I'm doing something wrong first. Am I the problem? And then what do I need to do? to have you follow me. But if, if it ends up you just don't want to, then uh, probably you're not the right place to be. <laughs>
And yes, so I mean, I think everybody probably told you at the interview session, that is a dream that inspires me and I want to be a part of it. And that's probably why, why you selected those people as having the, the right heart in the right place. I think when people have their heart in the right place and you show them how to be successful at making people happy, you don't really need to tell them over and over again, although it's good to keep reminding them that we do have a vision and a purpose. But as soon as you tell somebody who wants to make people happy a tip or a trick or an idea of how to do it, they're just going to bring even more creativity, I find, sometimes than anything I could have possibly have shown them. They right. have such great imaginations on their own if they just right. understand and really believe in the goal. Yeah, and, funny thing. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, we, we, had a, we had a meeting today. Uh, we sent one of our salespeople out to a, a local hotel in our comp set to, to stay overnight to, to see where they're at and how they actually we did a few times a few hotels this week to find out how they're rebounding from the pandemic um, mm -hmm. and what are they doing? How are they reacting? So the, the report, a report on a pretty nice hotel came back and it was kind of like, it's just a hotel. And we were discussing what we are selling it as to them was we, we sell authentic hospitality, you know, the real deal, but you don't have to, advertise it you just become it and people know it and so we have authentic that we just at, at our meeting we just said you know we're, we're authentic this is what we do you, you know it when you walk in the door you feel it you feel it at the front desk you feel a caring attitude the caring of the guests the empathy to the guests um it's not a hard thing i don't know why people don't do it except maybe they're short-staffed i'm not short-staffed uh on purpose. Well, I I believe that people are having struggling times right now because, uh, I mean, there are obviously real critical circumstances under uh, that that are very challenging. I'm not too belittling those challenges, but. A lot of people left the hospitality industry, not because they wanted to stay at home and collect unemployment. They went to other industries because they didn't feel appreciated or they felt frustrated or right. they, they felt, you know, um, left alone to handle the crisis and, and very challenging times without the support of their leadership to, to really be them, there for them and to listen to what they're experiencing. And I'm sure that when employees say to you, like, this is a problem, we're, we're struggling here. How, how can we stay ahead? You work together as a team to try to find solutions to those problems. And that means the world to people. Right, and that adds up with the follow me, I'll be behind you. <laughs> Authentically exactly. be behind you. People are not behind you. They're not behind the general managers. They're not behind, if you're not behind your own general manager or if you're a general manager not behind your own direct reports, they're not gonna be behind anybody any, uh, else. So it's all about being behind and back them up. If someone fails, then learn from the failure and, and get them through, not yell at them. If someone's failing, let's just say, I talked to a hotel the other day that um, I, I want this general manager to really succeed really well and he and he said i'm not a good situation and i've spent most of my life working in marginalized property so i get it and i said you know maybe you're it's never going to get you're all you're doing is bailing out water every day out of a sinking ship i said maybe you should scale down the size of your hotel and get it manageable because you can't manage something that's not manageable um what would the owner say i said well the the owner should should give you a raise for for minimizing the amount of rooms you have till you get it back in order because it's costing you a million dollars right now to operate in brokenness. And you can't fix brokenness if, if you have too much brokenness to manage. Yeah. I, <laughs> I just you have to understand the person and the problem. Yeah. I, I heard a story the other day about a director of sales 
saying he's alone at the front desk and he in uh, at the night shift probably after his busy day trying to be a director of sales you know fixed a toilet fixed uh, you know something in the laundry room uh escorted out a trespassing person and and how how can 12 hour, how can 12 hour days like this go on without any other people in the building to help him and i just thought what about his leadership? Um, and what if he leaves? Where is that going to leave us? Right. And he will. <laughs> and he sure. will. I'll hire him. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. You know, if but if people feel supported and they feel like the leadership is listening to them and we're all in it together and working together shoulder to shoulder and we'll get through it. And if we, yeah, if we have to limit the number of rooms there, why, why, why be sold out if you don't yeah. have the enough staff to accommodate more than 60% or whatever it is. Yeah. So that in our, our hotel, we, we have a saying and I, I use it a lot. It's, you want to do your job so well that when a guest sees you doing it, they're going to want to go tell other people and come back with them so they can all watch you do it again. And that's, <laughs> that's a formula that, that we use. Um, you want to welcome people in the hotel so well that they want to tell others to come back and show them how great this experience is. It works and in reverse. I, it's so bad. I'm never coming back and I'm going to tell everybody not to come back again as well. Well, For that's everything. why that's why this show is called Ho Hospitality Reputation Marketing, because really uh, we're creating our future marketing today by the experiencing the, the experiences that we're delivering yeah. today. Yeah. If every single person walks out happy, they're going to tell their friends and their associates and, and they're going to go online and tell the world about it as your guests have surely done with your properties. It's absolutely amazing. I know that you went into it not for the profit, but for uplifting the community. But tell me, what was the impact on the profitability of your company because you had that? Yeah, uh, we, we're doing very well. You know, obviously, <laughs> we, you know, we survived the pandemic. We've given everybody that has, everybody that went through the pandemic with me from the beginning to the end, they all got uh, a week's pay and plus on top of their time, their other pays. And, they, and I also gave them a vacation for a, a week outside of that. We paid for that. So oh, that's it was amazing. to say thankful for the people that were continuously there throughout it, um, that didn't take a layoff or didn't, uh, or we just didn't have space. Um, but we're hiring. We're back to, oh, oh, what happened to us? Well, there's a good story. Um, how did we do? Well, during the pandemic, we bought a two catering companies, three cafeterias. Wow. And um, an event design company during the Expanding. pandemic. <laughs> so Expanding we, during the so, pandemic. Yeah, so we took advantage of a bad situation, and uh, and we increased ourselves, and so now we're we're doing extremely well coming out of this pandemic. Um, you know, we still don't have all the corporate back yet, but we just got a commitment from a major one of the major one of our major sixteen thousand room night accounts is bringing all their people back. So. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, um, okay. we're going to have a great 2000. Uh, we're going to have a, a great rest of our lives, at least the rest of my life. <laughs> you, you know, one thing that really sticks with me that I've heard you say that you made that, that change to having five star, consistent five star reviews from your guests, which is just a reflection of a great, well run operation and, and a team of people who are 100% engaged and in it to win it to make every single guest happy whether any supervisor is looking or not they're they're really um they're really feeling uh the commitment to their jobs i heard that you made that change completely aligned with the culture and values of hilton and doubletree 
And exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I actually, when that happened, I looked up, what are the values of, of Hilton? And, um, you know, hospitality and integrity, I can't remember exactly what they were. But I said to myself, these are beautiful values. And indeed, if everybody worked and actually lived their daily lives, morning, noon, and night, by those values, every Hilton would, instead of having the 80% guest satisfaction or whatever it is that Hilton has, I've, I've, I've seen 80, I think I've seen 78 for Doubletree. What is happening at the other places that they don't believe that it's possible to achieve what you have? What do you think it's some, um, uh, mindset limitation that's holding them back from fulfilling? We call it, we call it commitment. That's all it is. It's, you commitment. Put it in action. You, guys, you have to do it. You can't. You can learn all you want to learn. People say, well, I'm a learning company. I'm a, but, but if you don't do anything with what you learn, uh, that's selfish. Um, so, but you're right. Uh, we are very aligned to the double tree, Hilton uh, goals and their, their, their vision, their mission, 100%. Um, because listen, we were anyways, before we read it, we were already aligned. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. So, so and it, it's nothing new and propriety to Hilton. It's, it's, it's just great way to run a business. Exactly. Um, and you know, so what would you say now to those, uh, there are probably a lot of new general managers out there who um, got promoted or are now overseeing two hotels or perhaps they were assistant GMs before, what advice would you give them on how to really live in a daily discipline of those values? So it's a great, great question that you have. The, the key words that when we hire we try to hire selfless people. We try to do selfless work. If when we walk down a hallway, we never wait for to call a houseman to clean something up. We clean it up because that's selfless. Because he has other things to do as well. If you walk into a bathroom and the sinks are wet, we we clean up. We don't call a houseman. That's if we if you're outside and a car comes in and the trunk opens, you, if the bellman or the driver is somewhere else, you grab it and do it. Um, it you're not always doing it. It's not like, it's not my job. It's my job to fill in if one of my people's doing their job. So that's kind of how we operate. So people are, they're very flexible to go help. They want to uh, live a selfless life because self, selflessness is joy, 100%. We're successful because we have selfless people. So therefore, when you walk in the hotel, it's like walking into Disney World. People say it all the time. It's different here. Well, yes, it is different. It's just it's a beautiful building. But what they comment is this comment on is the selflessness and the joyfulness of the people there. That's what a guest wants to see, even if they're coming for a funeral, even if they're coming and just got demoted. They want to at least see selflessness visually in front of my face and we can do that in a hotel you can do it anywhere you can do it in a bank but uh and and that's where people go back to they go back to those places that create that joy on the same token our our salesperson went to the hotel yesterday another one like i said and mm -hmm. it was a self hotel a nice brand a good hotel by perception but by reality it's just a hotel with selfish thoughts. No, no recognition of the guests coming in. No, all the rules are followed. Nothing was broken for, and Lord forbid you broke a, uh, gave a guy a bottle of water or, 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 or on their way out the door, you were, instead of throwing away these $5 uh, bags of breakfast, you could give it to somebody, but, but they'd rather throw it away because the rule says you can't get rid of it and i thought to myself wow how short-sighted are people um or maybe I, I i i don't know i've done pretty well in my life so i think i did but my idea is a good idea i, <laughs> I agree with you 
A hundred percent. And live to be who you are. If you're in hospitality, be hospitality. Oh, another thing, what, since you asked that question, and I think this is important. We work in the business of hospitality, work inside of it. Many hotel companies, they work on the business of hospitality. That's a whole different way to run a, a, a hotel. If you're working on it, that means you, you're just mechanically running the hotel. It's, I'm, I'm on, I work on hospitality. I work in hospitality. I work in the heart, in the center of it, at the point of impact. And that might not be me. It might be the, the hostess, but that hostess is me. That waiter's me. That dishwasher's me. Um, so I'm in it. I'm not on it. Uh, and I think that's a critical way to think about a hotel. If you want to be on it, good luck. Um, you know, you're not going to ever enjoy it as much as me, who's done this for 50, 56 years probably. <laughs> too long. <laughs> not too long. I, I need to get another 10 at least. <laughs> that would be the well, oldest hotel beer in the world. <laughs> Well, I think we can agree then if you want to have more joy in your life and if you want to bring more joy to your community, to your employees, um, you know, talk about kindness and compassion and generosity and making people happy every day. And it will do all those things. And it also, it will just happen to make you way more profitable because a... Wait. Someone who gives you five-star reviews is far more likely to spend more money, return more often, and tell more friends about it than a person who, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Our, our rates are, during the pandemic, our rate was 40 to $50 above anybody else's. I and uh, same thing right now. We're, we're high. You know, we just separate ourselves. I said, I could be like everybody else. Or I could be successful. <laughs> right. So I go success. Yes. So everybody out there, please stop settling for four star reviews. Reach for the stars. Try Amen. to make every single guest a loyal and happy, excited to be here customer so that they will come back time and time again. Why, why wouldn't you spend a little bit extra to stay in a hotel that makes you feel like a VIP. And, and clearly your team, Craig, are doing an amazing job at that. And uh, you, we can't lead from, you know, from the executive office. Uh, the hospitality is coming from the team. So it's really inspiring to watch you uh, have such success with those people and, and to know what you've done in the community. I'm sure. What is what do the people in the community have to say about the hotel? Oh, well, they call me the mayor. Uh, <laughs> I don't doubt uh, that for a moment. <laughs> so we're, we're an influencer, which you know, and influencers um, make things happen and they move it to the positive way. And we're working on a healthy community right now. We're working on pay to base lead based paint because that creates. A lack of education, working, working on homelessness, but everything's everything in a poor city. It starts at the, where's the point of impact, and in poor cities, they get they eat lead-based paint, and wow. then you have paint poisoning, and then you go to school, you have bad grades, then you lose your self-esteem, then you drop out of school, and then your life goes on forever bad. So, um, our goal, right? Our goal has been. How do we build um, a community with 700 credit score? So that's a big project because um, most communities like where we are at or most inner cities, the credit scores are usually 250, 300 or, or, or not at all. So you can't do anything. It takes 650 credit score to buy a house. So if you, get a t if you can get people to buy a home, now they have financial stability and they have financial awareness. And if you own a home and your credit score is 700, you'll have less marital problems, more graduates from, a from high school to go to college, cleaner city and a safer city. It's all about a credit score, but, it, but it's really not a credit score. It's 
of healthy living to get to that. So we're we're doing many things that through sustainable foods. We're showing we're leading. You know, follow me and I'll be with you. So we have beehives. We have if you get omelets at our omelet bar, which by the way we had omelets all through the pandemic. By the way, we never <laughs> stopped because I said you. even one even one person uh, they shouldn't be penalized because Good the pandemic. You. If they're staying here. So we never shut down uh, anything. Uh, I just refused to because every, every one person mattered. Sometimes one person was the only only person in the hotel. So we never went to the bag food or all that stuff. Uh, I don't I don't I don't think that's hospitality. But, but he left so, that hotel saying that he had a, a lovely experience and that he we did. got the full experience. We did. And that and that actually grew its own business. That, that actually became people were moving. Uh, COVID related, like doctors in and Amazon was doing a lot of hiring and different people were, you know, they heard of what we were doing. So we ended up doing better than most people. Um, you know, we didn't have a really bad experience as far I'm so, as revenue. I'm so glad to hear it. Well, I'm, I'm very excited to hear about all you've accomplished so far. And I'm looking forward to watching what happens in the next 10 years. Yeah, it will be great. It's going to be it fun. Will be. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. Uh, and we're, we want to help other hotels if anybody wants help. If anyone wants to follow us, uh, most of, majority of my posts are about what we're doing in the city. Or not me. They're not about me. They're what the hotel's doing. Even my Facebook, if you're on my Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, we're doing some pretty remarkable work, I think, you know, um, you know, not many people have a 900 person function coming up next week. <laughs> and, and if you did, can, can you service it? That's and we might, and, and we can do outside catering at the same time. So um, I think I must have a hundred and I don't have two, I'm not back to 200 people yet, but I'm close to, uh, I should say 150, 160 now. I'm excited for you, right. and I can't wait till you're you're you have everybody everybody on board and a full house every night and parties all every weekend. It'll be great. It will. I look forward to seeing that happen. Like, Thank uh, you so much. You well, filled right. me with a lot of hope, and I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people as well. There's Listen, if there's hope in the in the second poorest city, not anymore. It's, it's, we're, it's growing yeah. out of that. <laughs> it's not the second poorest city anymore, right? Uh, and, and, and since the pandemic, it's far from the second highest crime rate. <laughs> They're everywhere else now. But uh, we're doing well. And the city's doing well. And it's changing. So. Well, it's wonderful to see people taking a entrepreneurial spirit about being part of the change and making things happen for other people. It's a beautiful thank thing to see. And I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. And thank you for t always spreading good news to everybody. And hope. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. Have a beautiful day. And I hope we can connect again. <laughs> me too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.